Our next guest is Dr. Jeff Johnsrud. He's a surgeon at St. Joseph Hospital in Orange, California. His specialty is bariatric surgery, a procedure that ties off part of the stomach to help morbidly obese patients lose weight and regain their health and confidence. Welcome, Dr. Johnsrud. Hello, thank you for having me. Jeff, thanks for coming. You know, this is um, so important to me as a cardiologist because you know, most of these obese patients die of heart disease, and it gets to a point where you cannot take care of them. The blood pressure medicines don't work, you can't control their diabetes, you can't control the, their congestive heart failure, you can't control any of their risk factors. And so it's been such a relief to have somebody like you that I can send them to to take care of these, this issue for me because it takes care of almost everything. And the other thing I think people don't understand, you cannot Take, you cannot image their hearts. You cannot, every test we do on an obese patient is less accurate. You can't see the heart as well. The chest x-ray isn't as good. The CT scans aren't as good. That makes taking care of them very, very difficult. So I wonder if you could tell us you know, about who you select for the different, what types of surgeries there are and who do you select for them and how do you go about managing these people and what obesity is actually. Okay, well, uh, absolutely, that's correct, because these, these patients become a very difficult management problem, and they do have a number of medical problems that develop secondarily to their obesity. Um, when we talk about bariatric surgery, it's, it's, it's surgery taking care of the morbidly obese, which is a patient that uh, weighs in excess of 100 pounds for, uh, above their normal body weight. In those patients, typically they'll have hypertension, diabetes, degenerative heart disease, arthritis, sleep apnea problems. So they have a whole host of problems that go along um, with their obesity. So a person such as that would be a potential candidate for the surgery. So when do you select, I, mean, I know there's a, a bunch of different ones and they've evolved and they become more, they become simpler, but who do you select for one type like gastric bypass versus a lap band procedure? How do you go about choosing this for them? That, that decision making is actually evolving a bit right now. Uh, in the United States, generally speaking, uh, gastric bypass done either laparoscopically or with an open incision. Um, and now the more new procedure would be lap band procedure. Um, it, those, those are the two most commonly operate, common operations done in the United States. At this point right now, our thought process is evolving a bit. The gastric bypass is a very effective operation, mm -hmm. but it has with it um, a number of potential complications because it's a, it's a pretty big invasive operation. In that operation, in a nutshell, we basically will take the stomach, divide it with staplers, do a little bit of replumbing work, so to speak, and bringing the intestine up to reconnect to the pouch. Oh. Uh, lap bands, in contrast, is just a matter of going in, creating a, a tunnel around the backside of the stomach, and then putting the band in place. So it's, it's a much simpler operation, um, and it doesn't involve a lot of uh, dividing tissue and all. Now, Dr. Johnsrud, with someone who's morbidly obese, the rest of them is quite large. Is the lap band to shore up the excess size of the stomach, or did their stomach not change in size? How does that lap band work? Well, let me show you. I have a model that I brought along that that would help demonstrate it a bit. Um, the, the, to answer your question, the this, this stomach doesn't really enlarge to uh, any uh, great extent, okay. but there's quite a capacity in a stomach under normal <laughs> circumstances, and if it's, if it's not used properly, it, the, there's the potential for uh, abuse there. But when we place a band, or in the same, at the same time when we were, if we were to do a, uh, a gastric bypass, what we do is we're actually just using about 5% of the upper stomach. In this case, with the lap band in place, this now becomes the active portion of the stomach. Just that little part? Just that little part. So about 95% of the stomach, although it sits in place, is basically now just becomes sort of an extension of your intestine, but it's not used as a, a storage tank, storage for, tank. for food. Uh -huh. So would you expect with this versus gastric bypass to lose the same amount of weight in the same amount of time as uh, far as... The data shows um, that gastric bypass you'll lose initially a little more quickly than you would with a lap band. Mm -hmm. um, overall, when you get out at one to two to three years, the, um, the graphs come almost together. And that actually, Larry, brings up a great point because either, neither of these operations, if they're just done 
and, and, not in, and not used in the context of a full program where you have dietary training, yeah. uh, physical activity training, psychological training and support and support groups and things. Neither of the operations will really work very well. A person will either get a, a very mediocre weight loss or in some cases they'll actually even regain their weight. Yeah. So it's right. very important to do them in the context of a, of a full multidisciplinary program. I see, Dr. Johnsford, you have a tubing that's connected to the collar or the band itself around the stomach. Just what does that tubing and the port do on the end? How does that work? Um, when we place these, uh, we do, generally can do it laparoscopically, mm -hmm. so we make five very small incisions, three of them being, or four of them being, about a quarter of an inch long. Through that, we put our camera uh, oh. and our instruments that we dissect and, and place the band with. The last incision is a bit longer, it's, and this is where the port that we will access later on sits underneath the skin. So that incision is just slightly larger than this, about an inch long. Okay. This tubing goes from the band that we've slipped around and, and buckled onto the stomach, uh -huh. uh, comes out, just it lays in the peritoneal cavity, and then this lays uh, comes up through the, the, the thick muscle layer and sits just right underneath the skin. Okay. And then that way, later on, we can access this if we need to put a little bit of a fill or tighten up the band a little bit. And that's really the beauty or the innovation of this type of, of an operation. Um, in years past, we, you heard of the vertical banded gastroplasty, and that was a, an okay operation, but the fault of it was the fact that once you put the band in there, you sort of guessed on how tight it should be, but you didn't have any ability to, to either, adjust it. Right, to make it tighter or uh -huh. looser. Yeah, so this, this works much, much better. Does so, a person need that adjustment very often? Um, about 30% of the time, they'll do fine with just the band on there. They'll get very nice satiety. They'll, they'll eat a s much smaller meal than they were typically eating before, uh -huh. but they'll feel full and comfortable and be fine until the next meal. And two-thirds of the times, so we'll do one or two or probably at the most three fills to get them just right. So what would be the complications from this? What are the potential complications with this? I, I imagine infection or that's, yeah, I mean, that's rare probably. The, the, all these components are actually materials and items that we've used for a variety of different things, all, all the way from treating patients with cancer to different things. So nothing about this is new or new to the introduction of the bo into the body. Um, with the operation, probably the biggest uh, risk would be just really the risk of doing surgery of any type on a morbidly obese patient, and that's pulmonary issues, cardiac issues, uh, wound healing, uh, potential wound infection, and bleeding. Those would really be common okay. to any. Um, perhaps unique to this would be um, these bands on rare occasion can erode or, or rub into the stomach. Uh, the band, the, the stomach can slip through the band if it's not placed just right and the imbricating stitches that hold it in place don't hold it right there. Oh. So there's a few things like that that happen rarely. How would a person gain weight if this is snugged down? <laughs> I mean, how can they possibly gain weight? I, I can see them maybe not losing a lot, but you would think it has to shrink in the pouch enough that you'd have to burn up more calories no matter what you're doing. Just in theory, that's absolutely right. <laughs> in um, theory. There's, I think it goes back to sort of the fact that it's a, it's, a, it's a disease that has many facets. We rarely eat just because we're hungry. We usually eat because of the time of day, the social aspects, we're bored, we're stressed at work, we're uptight on the freeway. Life at large. Life at large, exactly. <laughs> so those are the things we typically eat. So, or we wait too long, we, we work and work until we're starving to death and we'll typically overeat. And so we'll take in more calories and typically the wrong types of calories mm -hmm. than we need to. So the, the what we need to do in addition to um, giving a person a tool so that they're not hungry all the time while they're losing their weight, we have to work on those other aspects, sort of the mind and body yeah. kind of approach to this disease. Well, it, so it really is, you just can't go to somebody somewhere and have this put in and have the surgery and not have all the other things that go along with it. You need to have a comprehensive program, no matter, I know your, your program is very comprehensive and that's what makes it so successful, and that's what you should seek out in, in a program. Absolutely, yeah. because um, I mean, most most of the programs do attempt or do a good job at have, taking care of the other aspects. In in our program, we really stress that. I mean, okay. we talk about that. What we're really trying to do is create change lifestyle and change habits, and that yeah. takes a, a, a good period of time, and it takes the um, expertise of a variety of disciplines: yeah. psychiatry. 
uh, trainers, dietitians, the support group, the surgeons, and all like that to really to do it successfully. You know, we really thank you for coming on today. It was very fascinating. I've not seen this myself, but seeing it uh, in person, I can understand how it would work. But I also understand you need a great program, a comprehensive program like you have. Um, it's it's a great way to save lives and improve the quality of lives. Otherwise, have no no chance of going on. We really feel like it's uh, it. it provides a great service. Um, it certainly gives morbidly, morbidly obese people, uh, patients, a great deal of hope. Mm -hmm. It's very effective. Yeah. If we can get folks to buy into the program and, mm -hmm. and follow all the steps, they have a really great result and um, they do well with it. It really, it really benefits their life. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having discussion. me. Thank, Thank you. you.